So yeah, the question on regional leadership, mm -hmm. uh, I think, you know, when you look at entrepreneurship and what is it really at the base, it's, it's, it's people trying to solve a problem that they have. And by its nature, it's not something that can be led. It's a spontaneous creative act. And I think when, when, when regional leaders start thinking that they can create uh, an entrepreneur network or a, 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 an ecosystem or something like that, that's really not the way they should be looking at it. They should really be looking at, we need to be able to create the conditions where that can happen. Mm -hmm. In other words, kind of clear the decks, get out of the way, and, and create places and opportunities density for entrepreneurs to be able to bounce off each other you know so whether that's a cool place to hang out or you know co-working spaces or so so regional leaders I think should try to find ways to enable that to happen rather than trying to lead it or think that they okay, can so create Jim, it. Let me, ask you. Yeah. let me ask everybody who's under 30 here would you rather see the city spend 50 million dollars on some top-down program or 50 million dollars of bike paths? Yeah, bike paths. Yeah. I don't own a bike, dirty, but. but I'm sure that would be great if you owned a bike, yeah. Or another Metrolink line. If I answer, yeah. does that mean That's I'm 29? Line. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> bike path. Wait, but hang on, we're, we're hitting on something that is really, really important. Um, it's easy for someone to swoop into a city and say, hey, let's make change, right? Let's drop yeah. some money in. It's not about that. That will almost inevitably fail. It's about creating the conditions, Jim, as you said, and developing incentives, arch grants, under which change is possible. That's why we need to keep building on our strengths, because of the, the, the strengths that are here, I was in Louisville three weeks ago talking to their, their version of the regional chamber, and the two things I heard about were launch code and arch grants, and how do they get it in Louisville? And I said, well, you'll have to ask Jim McKelvey and Jerry Schlichter about that. But the, it's, it's, we have strengths here, and we just need to keep building on it, and that creates the opportunities for people to succeed. So we're, we're doing a lot of things right and they just need to be strengthened and deepened. I think the interesting thing right now, and I've said this before, is that I think 10 years from now people are going to be nostalgic about this exact moment. They're going to say St. Louis was, I knew this, I knew St. Louis before it was cool and it's going to be this exact moment because we're able to make change and we're able to um, create interesting things. And what that means is that the people who are being drawn to St. Louis are interesting people right now. I'm not sure that they necessarily care if $50,000 is being put or $50 million is being put into something giant. I'm not sure that they even really care about the bike paths, although it does help. The perception thing is definitely a helpful aspect if there are more things for people to be involved in. But what's really cool about it right now is that they're going to be able to say 10 years from now that they were able to have a, have a say in this part of the, in this part of culture that is not going to be like this way for, forever. I think mm -hmm. that 10 years from now it's not going to be cheap. Right we're we're going to call the over, guys, because if in 10 years we don't invest in infrastructure and some of these major costs, St. Louis isn't going to be a cool city. Yeah, so yeah. there's bigger problems, yeah. social problems, bigger institutional problems. I don't expect the leadership to always say yes, but I expect them to say maybe before they say no. And that's a challenge we have here with regional leadership. But and, don't do you think want that I think that a lot of big changes follow because there's pressure on them to change. And if there were enough people coming here, and if there were enough people who thought that St. Louis was interesting and cool, and that was actually a driving component, it might be just enough pressure to make those big infrastructural changes happen. Let's ask the regional leader. <laughs> well, thank you. Uh, you know, I'm so very concerned about our ability to sustain the winners, the, the, the companies that were succeeding out of the valley of death that we talked about. But when they're going to need that next round of capital, when they're going to need 10, 15, 20 million dollars, and the successful ones will, we don't have the capacity here in town to lead that round of capital. So they'll have to look elsewhere. They're going to most likely look to California or Massachusetts, maybe Chicago. And the leaders of that round of capital, the ones that are going to do the deal, put the most money in, are going to require proximity. And the startups, no matter how successful they are, they're here for five years, they employ 15, 20 people, and we all know their names, they're going to have to move. I think Jason wants to get back on Jim's good side. Yes. So, so, so after, after making a, a terrible point about cheapness and ruining my career. <laughs> I do agree on, on one point that about, you know, the top-down aspect, if you did have $50 million and you tried to make like a garden grow from the regional leader standpoint, I just don't feel like that is the way to to spur entrepreneurship. I think, and, I, I think, I think the top-down method probably doesn't work, and you probably do need the other things that attract people here, incentives, as well as infrastructure like bike paths and other, yeah, those so other infrastructure things. Infrastructure is naturally top-down. So uh, one of the things that always bothers me is people talk about how inefficient government spending is, and you just have to say, yes, it is. It's inefficient worldwide. Like, the Germans are inefficient at spending <laughs> government money, you know? And uh, if you're going to build something like an airport or a 
road or you know fire departments, then you probably need government to do that. Um, but a lot of the activities that we need uh, as an entrepreneurial ecosystem can be grassroots. Mm -hmm. I think, I think they are by definition grassroots. I mean, if real entrepreneurship is, 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 is a creative thing that comes from you, comes from me, comes from, it doesn't come from, uh, a, you know, a master plan. It comes from a spontaneous activity of, of saying, hey, here's some way I can make the world a better place. And, and I want to do that. And then once I do that, then I'm going to try to convince other people that, hey, I've, I've, I've found a new way. I, I've created this, uh, this incredible, incredible thing here you know, that we all take for granted now. But for, at, at one point, this was something unique and, 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 and very innovative. So, uh, you know, I think that's, that's the nature of it. I agree with that, but I, I think as well, local governments as well as leaders within cities like St. Louis have to be ready to support that type of um, entrepreneurial activity and having different uh, support systems in place where when people come to the city or as people grow up and stay in the city that there are incubation spaces, that there are spaces to prototype ideas, that there are testing beds for any and every idea that may emerge from um, entrepreneurs within the city that's just as viable and just as important as that grassroots um, effort and that, that natural emergence of the the entrepreneurial and what that means in a city like St. Louis. That was going to be my next question. How does local government help? Right. They like, can help by getting left in Uber in town and not yeah. fighting it when they <laughs> try no to get kidding. here. Yeah. Wait, no kidding. That's right. not even a joke. Yeah. Yeah. I know. It's, I'm, I'm dead serious. Yeah. Yeah. Say that again because I don't know if the uh, uh, squirrel Lyft, tail got Lyft over here Lyft and time. Uber are uh, two companies that came to town and there yeah. was a lot of controversy, especially around Lyft. And uh, the taxi cabs here are a joke. And so public transportation <laughs> would be the first choice. Next choice is having Lyft and Uber here. And when you have um, some executives from the taxi cab companies on the taxi commission fighting Lyft, it's uh, very frustrating to somebody who was in a taxi yeah. and yeah. got hurt and ended up in the hospital for six months. Yeah. So uh, yeah. Lyft needs to be in St. Louis and so does Uber. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think we're, we're, re yeah. we're recreating what we did with the railroads back in the uh, 1800s mm -hmm. or something like that when, uh, you know, this was a river town. So the railroads wanted to come and cross the, Brit cross the river, the Mississippi at St. Louis and what I hear is that the, the city fathers at that time said, yeah, yeah, come here, but we're going to tax the hell out of you because we're a river town. So the railroad people said, well, basically, uh, okay, we're going to go to this little town up near on Lake Michigan called Chicago, and we're going to put our railroads through there, and the rest is history. So, you know, we're, we're doing that on a small scale. With the, the because refrigerated rail cars <laughs> were involved in it. I'm pretty sure that's true. I've yeah. heard the same story, too. I'm I've heard the same sure story. True. But I've, I think I want to get to Jay's point real quick about uh, the fact that you know if we have if we're growing these uh, these companies and getting them out of the valley of death, we need to be ready for the next phase. I think that we uh, we also forget that our successes beget new problems, and so early on we had people with ideas that didn't have seed money, and they were leaving and going to get their seed money elsewhere. Now we have people that have seed money, and now they need bigger rounds of money. The more successful we become, the bigger problems we have to solve, and I think that's. A, that, that, more money, more problems. That, that's an indication of our success and growth. Right. So if we look around a year from now or two years from now and we're asking, we're in this type of round table, we're going to be complaining and worrying about different things, but that's because we are solving these other problems downstream. Growing problems. Though. Growing good problems. Yeah. Absolutely. Good problems. We shouldn't complain. Even the money that we have, you know, the, the, the investors put the money into the companies that they like. It doesn't necessarily mean a company is bad. Mm -hmm. They're just investing in the ones that they like. When the more investors we have in the different verticals they can invest in, the stronger. When our tech companies are stealing talent from each other right. and having to write $8 million <laughs> signing bonus checks because they want to get this engineer from company A to company B, that's going to happen one day in St. Louis. $8 million. Eight million, sure. <laughs> I heard that number thrown around before. So. Really? Yeah. Okay. The interesting thing is that St. Louis is built to be a big city. There are a lot of the resources that big cities have right here in St. Louis, and that's something that means that we have the potential to become that big city again. There is money in St. Louis. It's just trying to figure out how to get it into that right spot. And I'm, I, I don't know exactly what it takes to get that to be what you're talking about, Jay, the next round, but the thing is that St. Louis isn't at a lack for money. It's just getting it to the right people. That's right. It's, it comes back to the theme of the night, which seems to be don't block the railroad, right? When something good comes our way, if it's different, look at it, study it, but then probably embrace it um, and get on on the bottom floor. Now he's hosting better too. This yeah. is <laughs> Here's what I want to do. I'd like to make an early investment in you and yeah. just get in on the ground Smart floor plan. of you. That's, That's kind of what I'd like to do. Yeah. Um, well, Jim, uh, we'll give you the last word here. Do you like, do you like it when people do that to you? Because uh, you come, is it hard to speak in your own hometown about these kind of things? No, I think this is a great conversation. And I think, uh, you know, we do have problems. I love the way you phrase it because I like to see problems. And I like to think about the problems that we're going to be solving you know, five, ten years from now. 
and uh, hopefully they'll be big. Thank you.